recent mistakes that couponers make. Uh, let's go old and new on here because while you're just getting started and you may feel like you, um, you know, are making a lot of mistakes, uh, those of us who've been at this for a while, we still make mistakes too. So uh, it's just across the board. So some of these are gonna be just some things that maybe you could do that would make you less prone to mistakes. And some of it hopefully will, you know, be a chance to learn from others and not make those mistakes, at, uh, you know, at the same time. Um, that's our goal tonight. So if you have a tip to share, feel free in the comments, something, a mistake that you've learned from, or if you even have, you know, this isn't working. I don't understand why this isn't working. Why do I keep messing this up? You know, I would be glad to try to help walk through what that mistake has been. Um, you are not alone. Uh, now, is couponing so tricky that everybody's falling all over themselves, constantly making mistakes? No, so I don't wanna come out the boat and make this seem like uh, using coupons or saving money on your groceries is super hard. It's not, uh, it's pretty simple, but there are moments where you get caught and a deal didn't work the way you wanted the deal to work or you got a little too elaborate for your own good and um, you know really fell apart. We've all had those moments. So that's kind of where I plan on going tonight, but I will gladly go um, wherever your questions take us to. So if you have a question that is not, um, you know, common mistakes and you wanna specifically talk a deal, I am fine with that. Leave your comments uh, or leave your questions in the comments and I will try to answer them. Um, so that's uh, where we plan to go tonight. Um, and in terms of mistakes, I'm having to pull up my notes because I made a bunch of notes as to where I wanted to go and I printed out and I left them in the other room. So, you know, we're just gonna start off the night um, with mistakes, I guess. So, oh, there we go. Okay, I've got my list up. Uh, in terms of getting us started, the first thing I did wanna hit on uh, that I think is probably what's setting folks up it, from the very beginning is when you start too big. And so this is one that I kind of say every time we do a drugstore video or we're talking about like an elaborate deal live or even if I'm doing a recorded video for you guys, is that you wanna pick one or two deals and you wanna start with that. Now obviously if I'm going to the grocery store and I'm just buying something and I'm using one coupon on it, that doesn't feel tricky. But when we start to deal with rewards or even gift card deals in Target, it does start to feel like, wait, this is a lot like math. <laughs> like, let me, let's just slow down and let's figure out what's going on. So one or two deals at a time. This is gonna help you in so many ways because first off, if you are new or old, the more deals that we throw together, uh, the more likely that something isn't gonna work right. And if I've got a bunch of things that I'm putting on the counter all at the same time in CVS and that total doesn't look right, figuring out why the total doesn't look right is a lot harder with 20 items on the counter instead of three or four. So, you know, I'm not saying that you have to break your CVS transactions up into a ton of transactions, um, but if you're just getting started and you're not 100% comfortable with what's about to happen, uh, the smaller that you check out, those smaller transactions, they actually make it a lot easier to catch mistakes. They even make it easier if you send me a copy of your receipt. If you're not sending me like, here's everything I bought, now what went wrong? Woo -woo. <laughs> but if you send me a copy of your receipt and that's literally the only deal that you spent, uh, it's easier for me to even see what went wrong. Uh, so. And no, I'm not saying that everyone needs to do that. Um, my, I, would, I wouldn't get anything done. Um, but I'm glad to help walk you through if there is ever that moment. Like, let's see, let's see what didn't apply. Um, does this happen to experienced folks? Yes. So I went to CVS this week and I bought all my deals together. I always buy all my deals together. Uh, my total seemed a tad bit high, but not too high. And when I got my receipt, that is when I then noticed that one of my digital coupons did not attach. Um, so what, are, what can you do in that moment when a $3 coupon that you thought was gonna come off did not come off? So you can take that up with the red, you can take it up with the cashier. Uh, you can get them to see what they could do. Could we return everything? It, it's up to you as to how deep you want to dig um, for that potential savings uh, 
and getting them to correct it. Um, what I typically do is I go ahead and I call uh, CVS corporate in this boat and I say, hey, I bought these items. They can see what you bought. They can pull up your receipt. I had this digital coupon that should have attached and it did not. They will see, oh yeah, you bought those items. And what they will typically do when you call corporate, you get one, well, you get a couple options. They will either put a coupon on your card for just $3 off. I've had them do that before. They will give you an extra care buck to kind of handle the difference. Um, I've had stores put it on a gift card. It just it depends on how you wanna deal with it uh, and whether or not you wanna stand there and deal with it, whether you wanna be like, you know what, ah, I'm done. We all have those moments too. But I am sharing that one moment because that was this week. Uh, is it my fault that the coupon didn't work? Not really. So I can't really sit there and be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, it happens to everybody. Uh, and the more that we buy together, the more likely we are to miss it until we finish checking out. And once you finish checking out in CVS, that is a tricky one to return. You just use extra care box. This really messes with the return. So then you've got to figure out another way to fix it. So long story short, small transactions is really an ideal way to go to catch the error and to stop yourself from being like, wait a second, what did I miss? Did I forget to use a coupon? Did I, you know, did I not buy the right items? You're gonna be able to catch that so much easier. So start small, don't go overboard. I promise you there is enough toothpaste in the world that if you miss this week's deal on toothpaste, you can get it next week. I mean, what, we had like four free tubes last week at Walgreens and you've got five free tubes this week in Walgreens. So, it's everywhere, you're gonna be fine. Just start really small. Um, and you know, from there, and keeping it small, it, grocery-wise, just to plug that one in, I'm, I'm mentioning the drugstores, but grocery-wise, I would still encourage you to keep that small as well. So if you're just getting started, that you grab maybe 10 items and you put that on your list, yes, it's gonna keep you from getting overwhelmed, that's usually why I mention that in grocery land, but it is gonna help you to not make a mistake as well. I didn't miss a coupon. I made sure I bought the right items. Uh, I didn't miss my mobile apps, hopefully, if I'm just focusing on 10 deals and not this massive list on my first run out to the grocery store. Don't do that to yourself. So keep it really, really small. Uh, and I agree. So Mary Johnson, I just saw your comment. Uh, she said it takes time to learn, but once you, once you learn, you're hooked. Yes. Uh, and I completely agree. It's, think of it as, you know, you're learning a sport. None of us are gonna go out and play like collegiate soccer. I haven't played soccer my entire life. So why would I just assume that I'm going to go out and be this amazing soccer player because I played one game? Um, no, it's not gonna work. Now, I know couponing is not a, it's not a, a high athletic sport, but it's the same concept. You're not gonna know how to play a game. You're not gonna know how to play a board game the first time you play. Same concept. So we just have to give ourselves some time to learn it uh, and not overwhelm ourselves in that little bit of time that we're getting started too. Um, so uh, to jump through a few others and I will get to questions too in just a second um, for others. Um, okay. Uh, Talking, we talk small, keeping it small on purpose. So you can do that one deal at a time. You can catch all those stacking parts. Um, but another big one in terms of keeping it small, and this, this I view as a common mistake. Um, you may not view it as that. It depends on where you are. But the folks that go so overboard that they have to try to get every single deal. That to me is a mistake. So if you are to the point where you see like, oh, there's another freebie at Publix, let me get in the car and go to Publix. No, uh, you don't need to be there. Uh, and it will end up in the end costing you a lot more money if you're trying to run out and grab every single deal that pops up. So uh, keeping it small to the, st the extent of how you're getting started, but keeping your trips limited is another huge way to help yourself out and help your budget out. Because the more that you go into the store, even if you're going into the store for super cheap items, you're still spending money. Uh, and the goal here is to have a budget and to save money, to cut our costs. 
So limit yourself on the number of trips that you'll take. Limit yourself, even if you have to, to the number of stores, you know, whatever you feel. If you've hit kind of that point where we've possibly crossed a line here, uh, you know, ask somebody, ask a friend. Do you, you know, they'll tell you what they think on this one. Um, but figure out where that line is and try to keep yourself from crossing it. For me, one way that that helps is that we have a grocery budget uh, and I am trying to not go over a certain amount. Uh, so yes, there could be a great 75 cent deal on this and a 50 cent deal on this, but if I start grabbing four of this and that that's adding up uh, and while they're super cheap, if they don't necessarily like put dinner on the table, then they don't have to be in the basket today. So giving yourself that kind of ultimatum, it's not about the deal, it's about the budget and making sure that you have the right mind frame is gonna help you too. Um, because I've seen a lot of folks dive into couponing and then come back and say, you know what? I'm getting a ton of stuff, way more stuff than we used to, but I'm spending more money uh, or I'm spending the same money. I haven't actually reduced our grocery budget. That's a that's a problem. Uh, you haven't you you haven't solved the crisis of needing to save some money here. So just to make sure that we're all on that boat too, that you've set a budget, that you're sticking to your budget, uh, and that we're not continually grabbing the deals when we should have stopped much earlier uh, in the week, possibly for some folks. Um, okay, so let me jump to some questions, um, and then we'll get back into my list. Um, Shailene's saying uh, on fine print, I had an issue today where I didn't understand uh, get one dollar off any four pastaroni, and I guess I had to get four boxes. So yes, Shailene, yep. So when you're looking at those coupons and the wording, if that coupon is a dollar slash four on the Southern Savers list, or you see it as one dollar off four boxes, then I have to buy all four boxes for that coupon to work. And you know, this is one where coupons have actually gotten a lot smarter. So for those of us who have been couponing, for me, I'm going into year 15 um, of couponing, uh, they did not used to be very smart. And so a lot of folks would actually intentionally use coupons wrong because an old coupon, it couldn't be coded for lots of things. And so if I had an old coupon and it said to buy this and to buy something else and to buy something else and they weren't the same items, the barcode didn't actually know that you bought all three items. Well, new coupons here in the last four or five years, I can't even remember when they made the change now, they know everything. They know even down to the size that you are grabbing the right scent of whatever that item is and it will beep. And then you're flustered because you're like, but I thought I did everything right. Uh, it is in the coupon uh, and the coupon will catch. And so we do have to try to look at the fine print and make sure that we really are grabbing what the coupon told us to grab. Um, there are times too that a coupon will just seem way too good and I'll be matching in deals. And this is where I, I mentioned this a lot of times on Monday nights, but my mom is the one that enters all the coupons from Sunday inserts and from mobile apps into the database. And so I'll quickly send her a message and be like, is this really right? Like that coupon is way too good. And I'll have her up digging images and trying to find the exact wording. But we wanna try to make sure that we're getting them right in the database so that they're getting matched correctly with deals. Does it mean that I still don't make errors? No, yeah, I'm still gonna make them. So if you ever see a deal on Southern Savers even where I have it matched to the wrong product, it happens, uh, you know, covering 30 plus stores a week, that's a lot of matchups. Um, so, you know, call it out, send me a note. Send it out. You can always flag a coupon too if it's wrong, uh, anything so that I will try to catch it and we'll try to get it fixed. But my goal is that you'll see them matched up and you'll kind of see that that's the right item for the right, the right product. Um, so Laura's question, can I use coupons on the full price and the free item for a buy one get one at CVS? Yes, CVS is the only drugstore, uh, Laura, that lets us use a coupon on the free product. So if you go in and it's buy one get one, you wanna use two coupons. Definitely if your coupon is for $2 off one bottle, I know to go back to Shailene's example, not if your coupon is for $1 off two, you get one, uh, but just at CVS, not at Walgreens, not at Rite Aid, 
Grocery store wise, any grocery store that you're in, you're always allowed a coupon there too. So uh, I don't know if you live in Florida, Laura, but the folks that do live in Florida, your buy one get ones in Publix are an actual buy one get one deal in Publix. You have to buy both of them, but you're still allowed a coupon on the one that's free. So that is a huge policy to love, but also to know and kind of ties into one of the points that I had on my list tonight to hit on. And that is that I, a huge help in not making mistakes is to know your store policies. I'm not saying we have to like go home and quiz ourselves on, okay, what can I do in this situation? But to just have a general idea of what that store allows. Um, so if you're looking for store policies, just a tip as to where to find them. And I try to go and make sure that I have all the links right too. But if you're on Southern Savers, on the desktop site anyway, um, mobile, sometimes they get a, a little hidden. But if I pull up a store list, and I will share my screen with you just so you can see what I'm showing you, I've pulled up the CVS page on Southern Savers. Right here is a box that says CVS links. Uh, one of those is a beginner's guide that I've done, the CVS official coupon policy, getting started guide. So that's there. You may not have ever even noticed that little box, but that is there for every single store. Uh, now that I've said this tonight, I'm going to go through and make sure all those links are right because stores are constantly changing where their coupon policies are housed. Um, but as we change for each store, you'll see that box changes, the links change that just depend for, you know, they're different for whatever's important for that store. So there's your store policies. You don't need to necessarily have all of these like downloaded hardcore on your phone, um, but it doesn't hurt to at least get an idea of what those policies are for that store. This is also a good point for folks who are gonna do drugstore shopping, which you should, it's a huge way to save money, to maybe stick with one drugstore in the beginning, learn that drugstore, and then branch out to a second one. Once you really get the hang of what you're, you know, what the rules are, what you're doing, not trying to grasp all these stores and all these store policies at the same time, just kind of learn in that one store. So speaking of policies, here is an example for you. Uh, at Target this week, we have a number of sales that are running, uh, but one of those sales in particular, it can get a little tricky on math. Um, so for example, you can go to Target this week and you can make money to buy Tresemme. But here's what you need to kind of know. Because uh, when you go to check out, you're like, wait, how did how, that's not the math that I had figured out? Um, so, how Target takes off coupons. This is this could catch you. Uh, this Tresemme deal. When I buy four of them, I get a Target five dollar gift card. There's also a twenty percent circle offer on all hair care. So some of you may know this. Uh, some of you may get caught by this. But that gift card it's actually factored in to the amount that that circle offer is going to take off. So if you went in and you grabbed four of these and they're basically four bucks a piece and so you said, okay, I'm gonna save 20% off of $16 worth of Tresemme. Nope, you're gonna save 20% off of, what is that, $11 worth of Tresemme because the target computer is going to subtract the $5 gift card then it's gonna take the 20% off. Now, you, you still owe the five bucks, um, and that's kind of frustrating, but it's factoring in that you're going to get a gift card here in a minute. And so it takes it out, then it takes the 20% off, and then you get to use your manufacturer's coupons. But for me, even when I'm sitting down and doing target math on deals, I have to be like, okay, then we're gonna do this, and then it goes back to this, and then you add the five back in. So it's little things like that, that when you're first getting started, you would be, you'd be like, wait, 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 why did it not take off the full 20%? Because it's factoring in the gift card. And it's things like that that just take time to learn. I don't even know that reading the store policy on Target would really help you figure that one out. It just takes time to learn how the computer's going to handle certain coupons and that's just one quirk for Target. Every store has them, um, but you'll slowly learn that. So hopefully, um, maybe that helps somebody there on a, on a Target deal if you're having issues with those. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Donna says, I have a hard time setting up my deals in CVS because there are no prices in the ad. So how do I know the price of an item before going to the store? So Donna, 
a couple things that you can do. On the CVS list on Southern Savers, I try to give you what the online price is for items or what the price is in my store. Obviously, that doesn't help you 100% because the prices are different uh, across town, much less in different towns. But the goal is to help you get a general idea. So I'm gonna show you the CVS list for just a second. Um, so if you are new to using the Southern Savers list, I'm gonna make this as big as I can for you guys. If you see the price in line with the item, so here, always discreet underwear and pads, $18.99, that was in the ad. So if the price is, again, on the line with the bold print, that price was mentioned in the ad. So Clear Care and OptiFree, the price right here, $16.99 in the ad. But then if I start to see these guys, we've got Benadryl and we have Aveeno and they're listed under the deal. That's where I went. I looked on CVS's website um, for prices or I looked in my own store for prices. Uh, they're not always dead on. I actually noticed this week my favorite go-to for CoverGirl products uh, is normally $6.99 for CoverGirl uh, professional mascara. And in my store, it is now $7.29. So it's always trying to catch those changes. It gets us all. Uh, but my goal here for you, if you're using those, is that it's gonna give you a ballpark as to where we're gonna need to be. So obviously looking at these prices, I don't know if I can even make this any bigger for y'all, um, for anyone that's on their phone, but if the deal is by $12 worth of Benadryl, just looking at the crazy CVS normal prices, I'm obviously gonna have to buy two. Uh, whatever I decide to grab there, two is what it's gonna take to get me. You know, so it may be a 20 cent different price for you in the store. Either way, it's not, you know, whether it was less or more, it's not gonna change that deal. You're still gonna have to buy two. So that way you can hopefully go in with the right number of coupons, kind of prepped for the deal that you think you're gonna get. So use those, again, if the price is below the item, that's just me giving you a ballpark on the price. And if the price is in, so all of these right here, if the price is, is mentioned in the deal, um, then that is the actual price of the item. So you'll see on cosmetics, we don't ever get prices. I just give you some ballpark ideas. But then right here, our Sally Hansen says two four fifteen because that's what it was in the ad. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, Lynn, if you have to return something at Walgreens uh, that produced a balance reward when you bought it, uh, do they take the balance reward back off your account? So when it comes to returns in the drugstores, Lynn, um, if, if I do return something, I usually lose the reward for what I purchased. I will tell you CVS returns, it's factored into the amount that they will give you back. Um, and I'm gonna hope that someone else can chime in too uh, and answer that one a little bit for Walgreens because I can't even remember the last time I did a return in Walgreens. This is where Paige would be a huge help too because she used to work in Walgreens. Um, so if Paige is on, maybe she'll answer your question too, Lynn. But I do know for CVS, the amount that you would get back is after the extra care bucks have been factored in. So your return is almost nothing. Um, that's why like the $3 issue that I had with a coupon, I don't want to return everything and then try to check out again. It's not gonna be pretty. If the coupon didn't attach the first time as a digital coupon, it isn't gonna attach the second time either. That's why you need to go about solving it a different way, calling customer service or dealing with the, them after the fact. Um, so for Walgreens on a return, whether or not the rewards go away or whether it's factored into the final price, um, that's gonna be one that hopefully someone else can answer for you. I don't tend to make returns um, at, at, in drug stores just for that fact. Um, so hopefully someone else can chime in. Um, okay, um, Teresa says, at Publix today, I tried to use a Publix insert coupon for the buy one get one light life along with two printed manufacturers um, and all I bought were the two packs of burgers uh, and it would not, oh, it would not um, take them because the second burger rang up for free and she said you could only use one manufacturer's coupon. Um, that, it, that is very interesting, Teresa. So store policy for Publix is that you are always allowed a coupon on both products. Um, my guess is that yes, with the BOGO being triggered by a coupon, but it's a store coupon, so it really shouldn't have even factored in there either, um, that 
I would, I would guess having a filler item on that would have made the computer happy. It actually surprises me that the coupon even ha or that the computer even had issues with it. Because if you went in with a store coupon and a manufacturer's coupon for any other deal, the computer would have taken it. For example, great deal on Axe and Dove Men products starting Wednesday in the new Publix ad because the current Publix health beauty extra savings flyer, whatever you wanna call it, has coupons for Dove and Axe products. And then we've got coupons for Dove and Axe products that just came out in Sunday's paper. So you're still gonna be using a store coupon and two manufacturer's coupons there, and the computer's gonna be happy as a lark. It's not gonna care one bit that you've done that. So my guess is, Teresa, because that coupon was a buy one, get one free coupon, it kind of put us into this weird limbo point but it is an example where even I, I never would have guessed that the computer would have had an issue there in 15 years of couponing in Publix. Um, and it's just, a, I guess, a tricky little moment of that buy one, get one free coupon and the computer really not knowing what to do in that situation. Um, so even in a Publix moment, let's say that that had not been a buy one, get one free coupon. It had been a store coupon for, I'm gonna just make up a silly amount, like four bucks off and you had a manufacturer's coupon for two bucks off, and let's say that it made that a money maker, the computer would still take it. And in Publix, they would give you a gift card back for the overage that was caused by those two coupons. So that is a unique scenario. A filler probably would have completely solved the problem. And I apologize that I in no way knew that that would happen for you. Um, so. In the end, um, for you, it became free, I'm gonna guess, after the iBot offers and not a $2 money maker, which isn't quite as fun, but hopefully you still got them for free. Um, okay, so Vicki, uh, when shopping at Kroger, a $5 off when you buy five, do you need to buy in increments of five? So Vicki, this is a change as well, but a good change. Kroger made this change probably back in March, kind of with the whole, I don't, I don't know if it was a COVID change, it was kind of around the same time, but now with their mega events, all you need to do is buy at least five, or at least whatever the number is, and as, as long as you've done that, you've triggered the sale for all the rest of the items that you buy, which is wonderful, because Kroger, before this change, yes, you had to walk around and constantly keep track of where you were, and that was a nightmare. Um, for those of us with big families, I totally did it with reusable shopping bags. I would put however many items I needed in a bag and I'd close it over and I'd work on the next one because I couldn't keep track. You don't have to do that anymore. It, it, it's marvelous, so just buy at least five and all will be right with the world, Vicki, when you go to checkout. Um, Danielle asks, when couponing on groceries, what's the best way to find out which store has it cheaper? I use Flip, but they don't have all the stores in it. So Danielle, um, this I would point you to the item search on Southern Savers. I don't necessarily have every store in the country either. I only have the stores in the Southeast, so I'm not sure where you live. But if you use the item search that is on Southern Savers, you will at least know if it's on sale anywhere else. Um, so I'm gonna show you the site. I've got the site really, really blown up right now. Um, just because it works better on people's phones this way, but the item search is on the right-hand sidebar. So we're kind of, I'm just scrolling down a little bit, and a great example for uh, right now is Tresemme. Tresemme is on sale everywhere. So I'm gonna search Tresemme, and it's gonna show you all the current sales. I actually have this um, set to just show you it at the six stores that I shop in. So I'm gonna, uh, um, it just, I'm logged in, so it just wants to stick to those six. Um, but you'll see that Tresemme is, it's on sale at Publix for a dollar after all the offers. I can get it for 49 cents at Kroger or free for the smaller one at Kroger. I can get it at CBS for a dollar. I can get it for free at Walgreens. It's a money maker at Target. Um, so you can use the item search and hopefully figure out where the best deal is. That's my goal for that one. If you're looking for something that is regular priced and you wanna know what store has it the cheapest, that's probably gonna be um, kind of just looking in a sense, taking it from a common sense approach and which store, if I had to buy something that was not on sale, which store would I wanna go to for that item? It's probably not your normal grocery store. I don't wanna pay full price in Publix or even in Kroger. 
Uh, I want to pay full price in Aldi. I want to pay full price in Walmart maybe. Um, or for me, I don't want to pay full price. Uh, so hopefully you're kind of looking only for the coupon sales. And for me, that would be where we were. We don't buy it unless it's on sale and then try to not need it until it's back on sale. That's, uh, you know, the, the bare bones basics. Um, but if you've got to buy it and it isn't on sale, it's not really going to come down to uh, regular price. You already know who has the lowest prices in town on full price items. So use the item search to help you find out who has the best sale price right now. Um, oh, and Paige, um, Paige is on. So Paige, I hope that you chimed in and I missed it in the comments and you answered our Walgreens question for me. Um, are there any ways to save on healthier items like fresh fruit and veggies or anything lower carb and low sugar? So we don't see a ton of coupons on fresh fruit and veggies, which you probably already know. There is one this week, so we should give them a shout out, I guess. Target does have with the whole fun run and all the Target Circle offers this week, there is a Target Circle offer for 15% off of fresh fruit. So you should take advantage of that one. Um, outside of that, for me, Paige, I don't purchase really any fresh produce in the grocery store. I purchase it all from a co-op uh, and, and a local farmer's market. And that has become a massive way that we save on groceries. Now we're coming off of summer season, so finding co-ops that aren't year-round co-ops can be tricky, but there are some places that you can look to find a produce co-op near you. Um, first off, there's you can kind of Google just co-op in the name of your city or produce co-op in the name of your city. You can check with your local agricultural extension office. Uh, every county has an agricultural extension office. In South Carolina, they're called Clemson Extension Offices. I think in Georgia, it's the University of Georgia runs all the extension offices, so probably related to the name of that college. Um, but contacting your local extension office because they're the folks that are working with the local farmers. And they would know if there is a co-op in the area. They would also know if there are any farmers markets in the area. Buying from a farmer's market, I don't want to go in and buy the little tiny basket. I want to buy the bushel basket or the box or however they're coming. You will get the best price possible. So for example, uh, a couple weeks ago, we got our co-op basket, but our co-op is directly across the street from the South Carolina State Farmer's Market. So I popped over there and bought a half bushel basket of okra uh, because the deer pretty much ate all of our okra this year. So I got a half bushel basket of okra for, I can't even remember now, I think it was $25, 20 to $25. Um, we came home and we weighed it, it was over 20 pounds of okra. That's a great price compared to what I would have to pay in the grocery store. It's never on sale in the grocery store. And okra is like my happy food. I mean, if you gave me the choice of fried okra versus ice cream, I would always choose fried okra. That's just, I'm just strange like that. So having that in the freezer, like that just made Thanksgiving, it made Christmas, all these meals um, possible from this one trip. Um, but not buying the little tiny basket of okra, I wouldn't get it for a dollar something a pound um, for that little tiny basket. That's just not what it's gonna come to. So you wanna look at the bigger packages. That's why a co-op is amazing because then you can split those bigger packages with more people. I don't know that all of you would want 20 pounds of fried okra, but I totally would, so I did. Um, you know, it's just making it work for your family and what your family needs. You could run and handle it all yourself, then do it. But if you can't, getting together with a few friends, boom, you are your own co-op because now you can buy that uh, bushel basket of okra and you all go home with a few pounds versus 20. That is a massive savings for us over the grocery store every single time. Our co-op meets twice a month. We spend $25 for co-op and we come home with probably 50 to 60 pounds of produce. It fills a laundry basket. So hands down, that is the way to go. Low carb and low sugar. The, the bulk there is getting out of the processed world and really focusing on kind of making your own food. So it's getting cheese, which we see deals on cheese, uh, and um, meats, getting uh, kind of getting lunch meats if you can find them on clearance or markdowns, making your own little cheese and meat plates, a lot of eggs, that would be a great way to go too. Um, so, and that's when you're talking protein, egg is probably the cheapest protein that you can grab. So those are the things that I would probably look at the most. Um, 
Okay. Um, Paige, another question. If a coupon is for so much off of two and it's buy one, get one in a store uh, that won't take the coupon on the free one, can I still use the coupon on two or do I have to buy three? Great question. So for example, we go into Walgreens and Walgreens has Dixie plates. This is pretend this week, but they do run this one. They have Dixie paper plates, they're buy one, get one, and you have a coupon for $1 off of two Dixie plates. You would have to buy four uh, in that world because if I bought three, I mean, technically you would be paying for the third one, yes, but you'd be leaving the free one on the shelf. So you might as well buy four because this, the fourth one is free and then your coupon is gonna come off of the two that you are buying. So you're grabbing four packages, but let's see if I can do this with my fingers. You're grabbing four packages, but two of them are free, and so now I'm paying for two, and I am using a coupon for $1 off two. The only exception there, since I used Walgreens as the uh, example, is that they have now made it where their digital coupons, if I had a dollar off two digital coupon, would actually apply to the buy one, get one deal. Magical. Um, but paper coupons will not. And that kind of goes back to learning the quirks of the stores that you're shopping in. Um, so Wendy's got issues with Ibotta. I scan barcodes for Ibotta also, uh, and it helps to not purchase an incorrect item. So um, yes, that's huge. That was just Wendy's tip, sorry. Uh, huge way to make sure that you're grabbing the correct item and that you don't forget to activate an offer. Um, that has caught every single person, I imagine, that uses Ibotta that you've gone out, you grabbed what you thought was the right item, only to get home, submit your, or try to submit your receipt and realize when you scan the barcode that it was not the right item. Uh, I can still remember the product that it was for me. It was Carefree Active Fresh Pads, and I had grabbed a package that was not Active Fresh, but I didn't even realize it in the store. So yes, what Wendy is saying, scan the barcodes on products, so to just show you, um, uh, there's a Tresemme deal right now. So I have the barcode scanner up. I tried to connect this so y'all could see it and it already was not happy when we started. Um, so I scan the barcode and boom, Tresemme pops up uh, and I can grab that offer. It's right there. It's telling me that I've grabbed the right item. All is happy with the world. Um, so do that. It takes two seconds. You've activated all the offers. And in some stores, you wanna make sure that you're activating them before you check out anyway. If you're shopping in a store that's directly linked, that is hands down a huge tip uh, to not make mistakes for sure. Now, all that said, Wendy does say she's having some issues with Ibotta not giving credit for all my items and I've had to send in corrections more often. They always correct, it's just time consuming. You're not alone. This is why actually Ibotta has taken away the direct linking for some stores. They could not get it ironed out for those stores. And I think that now that they've got other stores that are activated that are direct, they're just still having those issues. Um, and some of it, you know, to their credit, is that every store's receipt is different. Every store words things differently. Um, so sometimes things are caught automatically by the Ibotta computers and sometimes they aren't. And getting something coded that is different and every, it, it's probably a nightmare on their end too. So, you know, we'll give them some credit there. But yes, keeping an eye on your earnings from Ibotta is just where you have to be right now. Definitely with direct linked stores, which is Target and Walmart. Um, I think Food Lion is still direct linked, Lowe's Foods, Buy Low. There's a chunk of them. So just keeping an eye, you'll get an email from Ibotta usually within 24 to 48 hours after your purchase that you have received funds, that you've got earnings. So look at that email. Don't just like, you know, send it to spam. Open it up because it's telling you what your earnings were and how many for each one. And you'll quickly know whether or not it was right or whether you're missing something. Go through their help that it's under the account button inside Ibotta and you can submit a ticket and they will they will solve it. They are good at that. So I'm glad you've at least experienced they're good at that, Wendy, but it is frustrating. Um, okay, uh, so Chris asks, why does Publix and, and CVS still have regular prices on all items? It makes couponing really hard. Um, I, you know, I don't know uh, in terms of like figuring, I guess you're saying, um, 
you know, trying to figure out what those prices are for sale items. Um, it would be great if they did just always give us what the sale price was across the board for everything. But they do this so that each store has the ability to have the same profit margin. So if you live in New York City, uh, that store is going to have a much higher price for items or, um, uh, you know, our person who's always on from Hawaii don't even get her started because they don't even have the same deals um, because it, it, life just costs more in some areas. Um, so just across the, across the board, that's why they leave it to the store to be able to have their own regular price for the item and then the buy one, get one and half of that for Publix. Um, oh, and Amanda, uh, I, you know, you know, you're not alone. Amanda's saying she misses having double and triple coupons in Houston. You're really not alone in the South. We do still have stores that double, but the number of stores that double are significantly less than they used to be. Uh, and for some of us, they're going to get even smaller as buy low closes here in another month, month and a half for some folks. Um, so we've got Lowe's Foods, we have Harris Teeter, and we have Ingalls, and that's really going to be it once buy low is gone. Uh, and Harris Teeter, we haven't had triples or super doubles since before March. Um, so, you know, hopefully that's going to come back. But you're not alone. So there are still deals out there, even in stores that don't double. Publix doesn't double anywhere anymore. Um, so don't, don't get too frustrated. Okay. Um, what kind of grocery store items do I recommend stockpiling? That's Stacy's question. So she says, my drugstore stockpile is almost complete. I agree with you, Stacy. I've got like four bottles of shampoo right here. I just kind of pulled my, all my purchases that I made this weekend. Um, and I was ready to go. So I do have to give a shout out. So you guys know that I order my inserts. I don't know if anyone else's showed up, but my inserts for this week, like what was in yesterday's paper, it was in my mail on Saturday. I, it was like Christmas because I knew that those Unilever coupons are coming. I was a little excited to have them an entire day early. So I don't know if anyone else had that moment, um, but it, you know, shout out to the coupon people uh, <laughs> that I don't even work for, but it was pretty sweet, pretty fun little gift. Um, so Stacy, what kind of grocery items would you stockpile? My answer here is not gonna be the same for everybody. What you wanna do is look at what you purchase on a regular basis, what you will use, and always trying to have at least six weeks worth that you will use. So that, that amount is different for everybody as well. You wouldn't wanna know how much cereal, six weeks worth of cereal would be for us, but it's looking at your items and then getting enough of those items to last you six weeks. Pantry-wise, obviously that's super hard for refrigerated items, frozen if you have an extra freezer, it's doable, but you're gonna have to you know, work with different brands for refrigerated items to make that happen. But a majority of folks, for us, this is canned goods, this is pasta, uh, canned beans is a big one. Um, chili is a huge favorite, uh, and my husband saw a meme this morning he shared it with me, and I should have known right then what dinner was going to be tonight. Um, I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but it was uh, basically the gist was, and uh, all of a sudden, all of Georgia had chili uh, because it's cold. I, you know, I grew up in Florida. It's cold when it hits 60 degrees outside, so we had chili tonight. Um, keeping beans in the in the pantry is required around here. Uh, that those would be the types of items that you're going for. Snacks for us that just varies based on what's on sale. Uh, I keep tea on hand, sugar, flour, all of our baking items, and mostly canned and packaged, um, just the, the general things that you're purchasing, and it, it is different for everybody, but those are the ones that we're focusing on. Okay, let me jump back. Uh, oh, and Paige, you got yours too, yay. I'm glad I wasn't alone. Um, you got to celebrate too when they came in a little early. I was, <laughs> I was very excited. Um, and normally I don't coupon on Sunday for my CVS deals. I just take pictures for y'all, but I actually got to get the deals. It made me very happy. Okay, let me look at the list. We've hit a lot of the things off and on as I answered your questions. Um, there were a few more that I wanted to just touch on. Um, so sometimes it's missing coupons that is catching folks. That's the mistake that you're making. So part of that is solved by starting small with just a few items. Another part is pairing in the tip that Wendy gave with your apps, scanning your apps, making sure that your apps are there. Another one that can catch folks inside of apps, I mentioned this a few weeks ago too, I know, is to realize that like that Tresemme offer that I just showed you, don't assume if you go to Target tomorrow, 
yes, this is a moneymaker in Target tomorrow, but don't assume that that Tresemme offer is still there because it's a moneymaker and it's just like a printable coupon. It has a budget and when that budget is met, it will go away. The fact that I saved it just now does not mean that it is my Tresemme coupon. Um, now, actually, I've already used it, so I'm hoping that I'll see it come through and I'll see it apply here in a bit, but um, you get the idea. So a huge one with mobile apps. If you are going in to get an item that is completely free or a moneymaker, always scan your barcodes in the store to make sure that app is still, that, that offer is still there because that might, you know, I don't want to buy it if it isn't going to be a moneymaker or if it's some random product that's completely free because they want you to try it. Great, I'll try it, but I don't want to buy it if it isn't free. Um, scan the barcode, make sure it's still there, and then submit your receipt in the car. I can't tell you how many times I've used the back bumper of my car to submit a receipt. I've got all the groceries right there in front of me and I line the receipt up. Yes, it's got a little bit of red clay next to it because we lived on a dirt road, but I don't care. The back bumper works great. I take all the pictures that I need and I've submitted it before you can steal the coupon. So it's all about making sure that you get the offer right after you've purchased it. You don't have to do this with every mobile app offer that you're gonna use, but if it's a money maker, it's just a good, safe, decision to get it submitted as soon as you've made the purchase so that I know that I am going to get that money back before all the offers have been claimed. It's just, you're going to be a lot less frustrated, I promise. Uh, another one on missing coupons is watching the stacking. So as um, you know, we were talking the Publix issue and the light life plant-based meat um, that was one, you know, I couldn't have even fathom the computer having issues with it but realizing that I can stack offers is one that when folks are getting started, they don't even realize how great those stacking deals can be. So for example, um, there's a deal on Beneful. It was a deal last week on Beneful. It's really still running in Target, but realizing in Target that I can use a Target paper coupon. So we have a paper coupon for a $5 Target gift card when you buy $25 worth of Purina, it was in a past insert a couple weeks ago, I can use that paper coupon, it's a store coupon. I can use a circle offer and I can use manufacturer's offers on all those bags and I can come home and submit Ibotta offers on all those bags of Beneful. So it makes for crazy good deals on dog food. We just used four coupons, really. We used a, a store paper, a Target circle, manufacturers on each bag, and Ibotta offers on each bag. So realizing how deep a store will allow you to stack is important. Not all stores have that many offers. Uh, Target and Target Circle is very unique in that most of them are all store offers, but the fact that most of them are really more like sales and they will still stack with paper offers is mind boggling. Um, but if I go into Publix, I can use a store coupon and a manufacturer's coupon together on any product. Uh, I can use in Bilo a competitor's coupon or a manufacturer's coupon, but I can't use them together. So this is again, knowing your store policy, but stacking is huge. It's a huge way to save money and making sure that you kind of know the policy as to how that's gonna work. All our drug stores, Walgreens is gonna let you use a Walgreens store coupon and a manufacturer's coupon together. Uh, that you're not missing out on that extra savings wherever you are. Um, and really for me, that is a huge way that I go hunting for deals. The minute I see a store coupon, my first thought is, if you gave me a store coupon, odds are I do have a manufacturer's coupon to go with that. Because most brands, if they're gonna do coupons, they're gonna do the manufacturer before they do the store. So odds are you can find a manufacturer's coupon to go with most of your store coupons. And that really does make so much better deals having those two coupons paired together. So just kind of make that your hunt. Use the database on Southern Savers if you need to, the coupon database, it's right there at the top of the site, the button that'll take you there to go hunting for different offers. Uh, and the same if you can pair an Ibotta as well, do it, have fun with it. Um, okay. Let me catch up on a few more questions here. Um, so uh, Tawana asks, 
Um, oh goodness, it's just not a question. Tawana's talking cold. I was saying that it was 60 outside and that's cold for me. Tawana, I long would have left Virginia. I would not be able to handle Virginia weather. I know you've, or you've sent me um, pictures of even when you're snowed in. Mm -mm. Um, Seriously, my husband and I, we have a running joke about just my Florida blood. I, I grew up in Tallahassee, guys. Like, I live in a pair of Teva flip-flop sandals all year long, uh, and I still have so much Florida in me that, yeah, when it's 60 outside, he might as well just start a fire if he wants me to get out of bed, because it's not gonna happen. Uh, so I wouldn't make it in Virginia. Uh, can I give pointers on how to get the best price on a used I'm gonna guess you're going for car here, Alice. Um, uh, best price on used car, um, that's a tricky one, uh, but I, I did say we could go anywhere, so I'll let you go there. Um, what I would recommend, first off, obviously is always looking up Kelly Blue Book, going in with the knowledge of what that car is worth, looking up comparable cars in the area. Do we have other cars that are the exact same model, possibly the exact same year, that we can compare um, quality, like one versus another, which one's a better offer, which one needs more work. Uh, all of those things go into just figuring out, do we have a decent price? The other thing to look at though, in terms of a used car is, uh, just how reliable does this car appear to be? Who are you purchasing it from? Uh, are they super trustworthy? Are they someone you've never met before in your life? They may look trustworthy, but that doesn't that does not need to be factored in. <laughs> uh, you need to decide how trustworthy the situation that you're purchasing from is. If I'm purchasing it from a dealership, uh, like a legit dealership, uh, that is obviously gonna give some trust factor that isn't gonna be there for a person-to-person -person sale, but it also tends to raise the price. So it's those are all things that you kinda need to factor in, but you definitely need to have any used car looked at by a mechanic. Uh, I know that that is an added cost, but that is a very worthwhile added cost. Uh, and if you are ever looking at a used car and someone doesn't want you to get it looked at by a mechanic, mm -mm, that's red flags. And that is, a, you do not wanna buy a car that needs a new transmission. Believe me, don't do that. Uh, so that's what you're trying to deal with here. Yes, you may have to pay 50 bucks or whatnot to have it inspected by a mechanic, but you are saving yourself potentially thousands by buying a used car that really had a lot of issues that this person wasn't gonna tell you, or maybe they didn't know, um, but just save yourself that headache. So whatever you decide to do, you'll always have it inspected. Uh, and then comparing Kelly Blue Book, trying to talk them down as much as you can as well, is it, all of those are great tips. Uh, hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, Okay, so uh, Mary Johnson, you're saying you have to have filler items with that deal. Can I go over when we need a filler item and what a filler item is? So um, let's talk basic filler items. Um, I should have, I put up all my toothpaste that I got yesterday. But let's say that you go into the store and you grab two tubes of toothpaste. You wanna use a $3 off two digital coupon for your toothpaste and you wanna pay with a register award. I'm going Walgreens here specifically because this is one store that you will regularly need a filler item for. So I am grabbing, let's say my two tubes of toothpaste, they cost four bucks a piece. So it's an $8 purchase. I'm using a $3 manufacturer's coupon. So my total due is five bucks. And you have a $5 register award. You're thinking, great, this is gonna be free. No. Uh, the computer is going to view that you're buying two products. Your $3 off two coupon is the only coupon that it's going to want for those two products. And now I'm trying to use a $5 manufacturer's coupon. That's really what a register reward is. I cannot do that. This is kind of what Teresa ran into with the, the um, Light Life. I tried to just give them a whole new name. Light Life Burgers at um, Publix is the computer was viewing that she was buying one product now because it had basically eradicated the second one uh, and she was trying to use two coupons on that one product. Um, so in Walgreens land, that register award, that $5 register award, my pretend example, it's really a blank coupon. It doesn't care what you're buying. It is just, it's just a blank piece of paper for $5 off. 
but it does care that you have a product that it can attach to. So in Walgreens, a filler item is anything, and really in any store, a filler item is anything uh, that counts as a third product. Great items to look for. Uh, at your register, they may sell individual pieces of candy. There are some Walgreens in my area that sell Laffy Taffy and they're 11 cents a piece. That's my go-to if these stores have them. Throw in one piece of Laffy Taffy at 11 cents, the computer is super happy. It has a third product, it has a coupon for a third product, all is right in its little world and that, that register award will go through just fine. Uh, so you're looking for something tiny, clearance items are great, single candies, uh, those types of items would be what you would look for the most. Be careful in Walgreens grabbing items that are um, in the weekly ad as being like a dollar for six or uh, on sale uh, two for a dollar. I say that because both of the drugstores in our area, CVS and Walgreens, we don't have any Rite Aids left in the South. Um, if something's on sale two for one dollar, it does not mean that the individual product is 50 cents. So do be careful what you're grabbing. You gotta look at the tags because sometimes that individual product is really like 75 cents and the second one is 25 cents. So don't get stuck by that. Uh, but just something tiny is really what you're looking for in the store. And that could be whatever you wanted. Um, for me, I would be looking for something that was like 40 cents or less would be my ideal. And if it could be something fun that I can use for stocking stuffers or something else, even better. Um, are Sunday papers the only place to find coupons that aren't store coupons? No, Shannon. So Sunday papers are great and I do still recommend them. I would not give up on Sunday papers. You would totally miss out on some great Unilever offers this week that make for free suave. That was my other one. Moneymaker, Tresemme, I paid $2 for Nexus. These are all from Sunday coupons uh, paired with store coupons. Uh, but uh, you wanna get the Sunday paper. You also wanna look at printables. Uh, so using the database really is, Shannon, a key way to go. I, I mentioned this earlier, but just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, so if you're on Southern Savers, if you are using even our mobile app, the database is the center button in the mobile app. Uh, but the coupon database, if you click that button right there, I have it super blown up, but you should still be able to see it here. Um, so with the database, I can type in anything that I'm looking for. So I mentioned Beneful earlier. I can type in Beneful and I can see every offer that's there, digital coupons for all the stores, but also all the printable coupons, $3 off Beneful printable, um, mobile app offers. So there's the Ibotta one. So use that to help you hunt down whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, there's a lot that's online. Some offers online do require signing up for their emails, so just be careful there. Have an email account just for couponing so that these emails can go, you know, I'm signing up for a, Pur a Purina newsletter and I'm signing up for a plant life or light life plant burgers email. I don't necessarily wanna get all these emails all the time. You do wanna check it, it's gonna have coupons in it, but this way it's not gonna inundate your work email. Don't go there, we don't need to lose a job over coupons uh, and it won't kill it where you you know miss important personal emails either. They can all just go and live in that file of company newsletters. It's a simple way for you. But hopefully that'll help you find some. Um, Paige asks, is there any way to save on car repairs? I just got hit with a large car repair bill. I found a place that did help me save some, but is there any way to lessen the blow, so to speak? Um, ooh, that is a tricky one, Paige. Um, and you know, in terms of figuring out, you know, I don't, it depends on what the repair is, I guess. Obviously it's up to you and how much you feel comfortable if you, you know, thought maybe I could try to tackle this myself. I am married to someone who firmly follows the, if someone's done a YouTube video on this, he will figure it out. Um, I have learned to just have trust in that, um, but I've also watched him successfully change timing belts uh, because he watched some YouTube videos. So, you know, I don't know how, uh, how willing you are to jump in there, Paige, but maybe you could go that route. It could be that maybe you also try to find uh, mechanics that we can, in a sense, start to figure out another way that we can work things out. Um, so do you have a mechanic that, you know, you would trust with anything that they handed you? Uh, my mother has that. My mother has a mechanic that, I mean, she just, 
and she trusts him wholeheartedly, uh, so much so that he only works on Hondas, and when she bought a new car, it was a Honda, uh, so that she could continue to go to this guy. Part of that is part of how she saves, because he knows that she's only going to be able to afford so much, and so he is gonna tell her, look, this has to be done, and this can really be held off, and you can wait on this, or you can wait on that. Uh, and that, that is a way to save money, is finding that really trustworthy mechanic. So asking around, asking friends, you know, who would you wholeheartedly trust in a used car situation and going to that person. It, it can be a long-term money saver, may not help you in the short term right now. Uh, other options, you know, having that emergency fund built up, using credit cards wisely here, but potentially getting something back on the purchase for that. Um, you know, those are kind of the only big ways to try to save though. Um, oh, <laughs> my husband just sent me a little note. He said, uh-uh, the timing belt was pre-YouTube. It was a long time ago. I kind of forget how long we've been married um, and how long some of these sites have been around. Um, so Shannon says, um, the Kroger that you shop at won't take printed coupons. Um, so yeah, if you're in a store, Shannon, that doesn't take printed coupons, then for you, Sunday paper, hands down, is gonna be where you're gonna have to start um, trying to think. You know, there are some companies that used to mail offers and you could try that option. This, I, I used to always recommend this in workshops a long time ago, but I, wouldn't, I would imagine it would still be good. Every product has a phone number on the back of it. Start making some phone calls. And so uh, usually when you contact a company, they typically only speak one language. So you could call them and you could say, you know what, I hate your product. They would send coupons. Uh, but you could call and say, you know, I love your product. My store will, will not take printed coupons. I was wondering if you would send me some. You'll be surprised how many of them will say yes. And seriously, when it's that simple that literally every bottle you will quickly find call us if you have a problem and you will find that phone number right there. You know, it just takes 30 minutes a day, you just sit there and you make some phone calls and you get them ordered and maybe you just get to start to fill your mailbox with some great mailer coupons that your Kroger would take. Um, I would also, just to throw this out there, if you've got stores that have done that, they've created their own coupon policy that is separate from the corporate coupon policy, I would go ahead and call Kroger Corporate and lodge a complaint. Now, Kroger Corporate is gonna tell you that each store is allowed to make their own decisions. You can say, yeah, I get that, but I'd still like you to know that this is a complaint uh, with this store. You know, I don't feel like they're being customer service friendly. They're not, you know, even acknowledging that other stores in the area accept these uh, and just lodging the complaint. And enough complaints usually make stores change their tune. Kroger is the one corporate office that will give you that uh, answer back. Every store is allowed to make their own. Most every other corporate office will call the store and quickly change the tune of whatever that store just tried. So if you're ever checking out for anyone and they try to say, oh, we don't take printable coupons anymore, like, whoa, uh, hold up. If they won't change their tune in the store when you show them the co corporate coupon policy that says they take them, then you just get home and you call corporate and you just lodge a complaint. And they do, they pretty much will kind of nip it in the bud, uh, Barney Fife, and we're, we're solved and we get to take printable coupons again. Kroger being the one exception there uh, and their stores just being a little on the difficult side with them in some areas. Uh, Tammy, when's the best time to buy a new TV? At this point, Tammy, you may not like it, but it's Black Friday. So you're just gonna have to hold out for a couple more months Labor Day weekend would have been your last big one. We see big sales right when football season is starting up, um, but we will not see big sales again until Black Friday. So just hold out potentially one potential earlier option. Uh, every year we see Sam's run a Veterans Day one day sale. It will probably be a one week sale that is around that Veterans Day window, which is always November 11th. So just look in there if you have a Sam's Club membership because that does make some crazy good deals on a TV. We actually, I think our TV that we currently have is from a Sam's one day sale like four or five years ago. So that's, um, I would be the person standing up and saying, yes, that's the deal you should grab. Uh, Diana, can I explain the difference between when a coupon says per purchase and per item? Great question. I wish I had an example for us here. Um, 
you know what, I'm thinking about it, I think I do. Uh, so if you are pulling up, or if you have a coupon in front of you and it says that you are allowed um, one coupon per purchase, then that is one coupon per item purchased. Um, so I'm gonna pull up a PDF here. Um, so sometimes I've mentioned this as a tip before guys, but if you have, um, if you use Chrome, I don't know that you can do this with all browsers, but if you use Chrome and you are not at a computer, you can save your printable coupons to a PDF. So these are all expired at this point, but I just still have them on this computer because there will be times that I am, oh, I'm not showing you the right screen. Let me see if I can change this to show you. There we go. Um, so here we go. We're looking at some coupons that I technically printed in February uh, on the way to church. I'm, on Sunday mornings, I always post the new coupons that are printable and I'm pulling those up as my husband is driving to church. So these, for example, as we look at the fine print, um, and this is a great example. Let me see how big I can make this guy right here. Um, oh, and I made him blue accidentally by clicking on him. Um, so this Lubriderm, oh, don't be blue. Um, right here, his fine print in this line says one coupon per purchase, which would be one per Lubriderm lotion, and one coupon per customer. Boom, you get one. You get to buy one Lubriderm, you get to use one, one coupon per purchase, but you only get one per customer. That one has completely answered the question as to how many coupons you get to use. Uh, at the same time, you'll see others that will say, limit one, this guy is a scrubbing bubbles, limit one coupon per purchase of specified products and sizes and quantity indicated not to be combined, and it keeps going. Uh, limit of two, um, nope. limit of two identical coupons in the same shopping trip. So it's spelling out for you at both sides. Not all coupons do that. So sometimes you will get into the store and the store cashier will say, ah, this says limit one coupon per purchase. It's one coupon per item purchased and then a limit of two identical, limit of one per customer, limit of one per transaction. Those will be the other words that will really spell out how many coupons I am actually limited to that are the same coupon. Now, an example here that could be a little different, let's go Tide. Uh, most of us don't have Tide in our inserts anymore. We can print them, but you're still only allowed one printable coupon when you print a Tide coupon, and it'll, it will say that, limit one, but you also have a digital. Every store has a digital Tide coupon. So if I wanted to buy two Tide items, I could. I could use a paper and a digital. So if you're dealing with a coupon that has a limit, get creative. Use one of that coupon, just like it's asking you to, but find another coupon if you wanted to buy a second one from a different source. Uh, so I've got a printable and a digital. I have a printable and an insert. Uh, you can kind of make that work. We are not using more than one of that coupon, just like it asked me to, uh, and not more of one of another. You know, following the rules, but we're using different offers from different sources, and then we're all happy again. So hopefully that helps to spell it out even better looking at those different examples. Um, <laughs> Yes, and Mary's right. Some cashiers don't understand their store coupon policies. You need to be nice to them. They are learning to, uh, yeah, don't ever make coupons give you a bad day or them a bad day. Um, your cashier is not there to make this a difficult experience. They are there to hopefully not get fired. So be nice to them. Um, you know, they don't wanna lose their job over your $2 coupon and you need to look at it that way as well, you know, from their side of the story. So if a coupon does not work the way that you're wanting it to work, you can ask for a manager. You can say, hey, could I just, you know, take this to customer service and get the manager to look at it there or have the manager come over. If we're still not on the same page, then make a decision. I'm either gonna buy it and not use the coupon and maybe I'm gonna call corporate and we're gonna see where we can get from there or I'm gonna just say, hey, you know what? I don't really want it and it's fine and we're just, I'm, I'm good and we're gonna walk out and that's okay. Um, but don't, don't ruin anyone's day. Um, okay, um, 
Sheila says, can you load multiple gift cards on Amazon? Yes, you can. Uh, you can load up your Amazon account, Sheila, with as many gift cards as you have. So if you found a deal on Amazon gift cards and you wanted to just go that route, go for it. Uh, you will just sit there under Amazon gift card and just keep, keep hitting reload, reload, and adding in new ones. Uh, this is how we, whenever you have those um, prepaid Visa gift cards, like the P&G rebates that are out, uh, whenever you do those and you get these random gift cards and trying to keep up with which one has $2 left on it, I load all of them into our Amazon account. So you put them in as a payment option, these little rebate gift cards, whatever amount is on the rebate, you buy that in an Amazon gift card. Now this, this pretend rebate gift card is dead. You've just used its whole value for an Amazon gift card and you keep that loaded into your account. Problem solved. I will know that I have used up every last little dollar on that gift card uh, and I didn't forget to use it. So that is hands down the way that we go to. Um, Aaron says, when it says not to be combined with other offers, Publix will still accept a store coupon. Yes, they will. Uh, and you can still use it on a sale. Generally, when you see the wording on those coupons, it's it's really meaning not to be combined on the same product with the same, with another manufacturer's coupon. So if I'm using like a $2, uh, you know, a, two, a $1 off Suave coupon, then I'm not gonna use another $1 off manufacturer's coupon on that. Um, but the store policy kicks in here. The store policy is that you can always use a store and a manufacturer's coupon together. And the store policy kind of on the wording of that coupon would end up trumping and deciding what the real policy was for that coupon, if that makes sense. The reason for that is that these coupons are redeemed in massively different buckets. The store coupon, in reality, was redeemed before the flyer was even printed, paid upfront, uh, give, give Publix this kind of bucket of advertising money to be in the flyer. Uh, however many are redeemed, great. However many aren't, even better for Publix. Uh, and the manufacturer's coupons are paid on redemption uh, through a clearinghouse. So, you know, you're dealing with all these, all these different buckets. And in the end, that's how it's going to come down to. Store, store policy on that, trumping anything else. And you're usually always allowed a store and a manufacturer's coupon together. Um, Christine says, I know that you're paperless, so if I shop before Saturday, do I only load the coupons for that week? Yes, great question, Christine. So I shopped Sunday. Uh, I only loaded the digital offers on Sunday morning that were new. I had already loaded all the ones from Saturday night for CVS. I only loaded the new offers that I knew I was going to use in CVS yesterday and all the rest of my CVS digital coupons are still there because if I load them on Sunday, they would expire on Saturday. I don't wanna do that. I wanna wait and load them at the end of the week. So for example, I had a new CVS store coupon for $2 off two Suave. We have a Suave Ibotta offer right now and a Suave's on sale and we had a manufacturer's coupon. So that store coupon meant that I could get two bottles of Suave completely free. Done, loaded and redeemed. Um, but all the rest of them really still there. Um, okay, we're totally over on time, but I will keep answering questions. Um, uh, Carl, what about one coupon per purchase and one identical coupon per transaction? So if that is the wording for both offers, or if that's like across the board what it's saying, then that means you may use one coupon. So it kind of goes back to that Lubriderm that I just showed in a minute. Um, so it's saying up here, if you look at this, this second line, I have it as blown up as I could and it still looks like fine print, um, but it says one coupon per purchase and one coupon per customer. Um, it's a, across the board. So the one coupon per purchase would be what it would normally say, but that second part is kind of sealing the deal. You're gonna get one. So if it is coming through and giving you both of those and that one identical coupon per transaction, that you get one of that coupon. Now that's where you then get creative and you find another coupon that's either a different amount from a different source. You can, you can still use a second coupon, just can't be that one. And you kind of need to find where your other one might be if you were gonna grab more than one. 
Um, can I use two different printables or two different inserts for the same item? Yes, so exactly, going along with that line. So the example I just showed you was a $2.50 Lubriderm printable. Um, so if I was using this, maybe I found a $2 Lubriderm printable, perfect. Even if they both said limit one uh, per customer, it's of that coupon. So you've done that. I have a $2.50, I have a $2. I did not use more of either one of them. I followed the rules that, was, that were on both of those offers and you are perfectly good um, and using one digital, one paper. Uh, and I know this can be a, a tricky one because this can be, be down to the cashier. Another thing to remember on these uh, is now that we've got such a smart barcode um, to sometimes just see, you know what, can we just scan it? Can we just see if it will work? Uh, because if the coupon's expired or you're not buying the right item, it's not going to work. Now the limits aren't necessarily coded into those barcodes, um, but sometimes when you know, I am following the rules, I am not breaking a rule here, that sometimes that's enough to just, you know, take some pressure off the cashier and yeah, let's just see if it works. You know it's gonna work because the limit's not part of it, but we're just trying to follow the rules and make you make this work too, um, that hopefully that will help uh, in the end. Um, okay, so Wendy asking on Disney Circle deals. I would hold off, Wendy, if you're wanting a Disney Circle, um, they always run a Black Friday and a Cyber Monday sale, and it is by far the best price that we see all year long. So I would wait. If you could, we will not see any great deals before then. So just hold off. It's an online deal directly through them, usually that kind of that whole week of Black Friday, and we see it every single year. So that is your, like, just try. Try to wait if you can. Okay, I think I hit all the questions. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anybody's. We had a lot of questions tonight and looking at my list, um, it's hard to make sure I didn't even miss anything there either. I had a few other things I was gonna pull out. Um, I did realize that kind of in prepping for this, um, we haven't really talked coupon organization tips in a long time. So I thought that's where we would go next week. It's kind of a, you know, a basic topic, but it's an important one. And it is one of the things that I had down as a way to keep you from making some mistakes. So we're gonna talk organization next week. And I think we're probably gonna go into mobile apps some uh, as well, as now that half of our coupons are on mobile apps and half of our coupons are ones that we hold, we'll just throw that together. And that will be our topic for next Monday night. Um, and I will be back on tomorrow, Tuesdays at two. That's what I'm trying to stick with for all of the top drugstore deals. Uh, and I'll share everything I grabbed at CVS. Uh, I even shopped the toothpaste deals in Walgreens since I had all my coupons. Um, so I will be back on for that. If you can't catch it live, you can always watch it after the fact. Um, so the videos, when I do go live, you can watch them on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you want. They will be in both places. So I'll catch you tomorrow at two or back again here next Monday night at 8.30, mobile apps and organization. It's a big, big ticket, but I'm gonna go for both of them. Oh, that was my alarm to do something else. As soon as we got done, I thought for sure we'd be done by now. So sorry guys. Well, I hope you have a great night. Thanks for sticking around. Even as we went over tonight, hopefully I got all of your questions answered. Uh, and if you have any others that I didn't answer, feel free to send me a Facebook message or an email. Uh, I will gladly answer them. Jenny at southernsavers.com. Uh, I am faster on messages though than I am on email. I will just give you that, that truth there. Uh, but hopefully I got everybody's questions uh, and I will talk to you again next week. So thanks again for joining me and y'all have a good night.